sometimes. Um, there's different kinds of music and sometimes you just follow instructions and in in a certain kind of piece it just sort of comes out right, but I don't think the list is like that at all. You really have to think in a very different way. Um, and, you know, I was out there walking my cat and thinking about you and thinking about all this. And, you know, we've had some conversations about some of the fanciful things that go into all this um, and the imaginative things that go into this thing. So, you know, all of that I think is important. Um, I mean, even reading a book about Francis might be helpful. Um, just, I was thinking about that because it's something I hadn't thought about in a long, long time. But, um, uh, you know, that um, the book that I read years and years ago, like Multiple Lives of Mine Ago, by G.K. Chesterton on Francis. But there are other books about Francis, and he's like a, he is a legend, a kind of legendary character uh, from like a thousand years ago. Do you know anything else about no, but I'm just realizing that I don't have a pencil. Can I just go grab one? Do it. <laughs> you don't have to write all this down. But... <laughs> She's going to write it down. Okay. The idea of poverty, um, but then also um, just, you know, at a time where, where the, the, um, the powers that be, you know, that you know, there's a lot of consolidated power and the way the structure of the society was. And he was like, none of that. He was like, you know, I don't know who to compare him to, but, you know, that, that kind of an orientation. Yeah, I, I feel like, is it, is it his face that people have on medals or like medallions or something like that? I think it or is. It? This is another thing because that, that's um, when, you know, when somebody like that, you know, people love Francis, you know, for that reason, because he, you know, he's not... You know, he was like a regular guy, even like a street person, you know, just, you know, that kind of thing. I mean, you can, you, I don't really, I'm not the person to consult, but I'm aware enough to know that he's kind of like that kind of a character. He's not like a, a big, uh, you know, uh, he's not like a politician, okay? He, he's, he's much more like the guy in the street, he, you know. Um, and, you know, you know, the current pope, you know, is named after this Francis, you know, and when he became pope and, you know, they come up with a pope name, you yeah. know, they, he said he wanted to be Francis. Wh which Francis? You know, because the Francis Xavier is a different one that they thought, oh, he's going to be. A no, Francis Assisi, which is no pope has ever called himself Francis of Assisi. So, again, it's that in itself is a gesture that people, you know, they right away, it sets off, a, runs up a red flag because mm -hmm. people think of Francis as that way. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, I was also thinking about, you know, walking my cat, like we talked about, with animals. The whole thing of being out with the animals, you know, mm -hmm. and the birds. And then I also thought of Alfred Hitchcock, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But, you know, the interesting thing about the Hitchcock, that's kind of a, you know, there is this idea, well, the birds are out there, you know, and they're, they must be thinking something. What are they doing? Are they plotting against us? Or you know, what are they up to? And so that, that sense of, you know, that kind of a you know, a debased view of animals. It's like assuming the worst about them. Mm -hmm. um, but there's still a sense in which you can somehow commune with them. And I also thought of, okay, there's Mozart, because, you know, he had a pet bird that he taught the theme of one of his piano concertos to, and the bird would sing it back, and he actually writes down how the bird sang it, so we have a record of that. So the idea that people and birds can kind of talk to each other, it's not that crazy, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So it's trying to figure out some of those things. So. I don't think it's irre irrelevant to think these fanciful thoughts with, with your piece. Um, it might give you an idea. And I also think the religious thing, like the medallion thing you're mentioning, is probably also something you want to be conscious of. Mm -hmm. um, because again, List is, is dealing with this. This, this. The idea of these legends, there's, I, I don't think there's, well, there's something called adiaphora, the idea that in the in the Roman Church, Catholic Church, and other Christian traditions, there are some things that don't matter. In other words, you don't have to believe this stuff. Mm -hmm. It's a non-essential, is what they call it. Mm -hmm. But there is a lot of uh, piety out there. Like people have these icons, and they get like the postcards and stuff. You know, all that stuff is out there. So there's a sense of like devotion to these kinds of legendary things, and uh, List is definitely tapping into that here. So I just want to make sure that's on your radar, too, when you're, when you're dealing with this. 
um, this thing. But it, it's interesting, and it, you know, it's just interesting because there are so many different threads that you could follow in a literary sense about this music. And I think those literary things do influence your interpretation. You know, right away he has places like that, like the, the the solemn place, right? Suddenly comes out. You know, that that's like another just um, you know. Um, the semiotics people would call it a topic. You know, the idea that you're you're referencing something by using a style of music, right? It's like a symbol of that thing. Um, uh, one of my professors cautioned me about running away from semiotics, and he's probably right. But um, uh, you know, it's been a very popular thing right now amongst a lot of musical intelligentsias to talk about semiotics. Um, that's. Uh, part of um, the, the, the area I think you, that we're starting to bust into here. It's, the music doesn't just play itself, it really is sort of like reading poetry. You've got to kind of follow all the implications and kind of have a sense of where that's going. Um, so I think the, the big issue of the technique of doing all those trills and arpeggios and everything, I'm glad you've been chipping away at it because it is getting better. Okay. It's funny how like when you're when you're playing a piece, it, it, it it's like even once you know the whole thing, it, it, it feels like some things like, kind of like what you said about like clearing the smoke or like the sand kind of gets blown away and you see a little more and you go, oh, that's actually a problem. I wasn't sure before, and now like that's that's the thing you need to be thinking about, kind of stuff. It's important to. I'm glad to hear you say that because it's important to react to your own work, because you know it's like the sculptor. You know, you're, you're making something out of clay and you, it suddenly does something. It's like, oh, I'm going to go in this direction. So you're working with a material and the material is something that, that there is a, 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 a reaction to your own work. Um, and it, of course, there's, there's, there a was... referent. there's a referent to your other knowledge, but just working with the material, things become clearer. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Like there, there was a, just a couple of days ago, actually, I, I changed a fingering on one of the trills. Um, because I went, oh, like this, before it was, I was playing it slowly, and it was like, well, maybe I just need to play it slowly until it can get faster. And then at some point it was like, yeah, this this isn't working, maybe there's something else. Like, there's that, that sense of, at some point, everything else around it is getting really good, and that thing is still the way it is. And then it's like, oh, yeah, you, you really have to address that part. Yeah, and, and you know, that's the thing, being, uh ready to notice that something's happening, that's, you know, your, your methods are not solving. Um, it, it does take a level of maturity as a player to, to approach the music in that way. So um, I think that's totally right. Um, it's hard when you're, you know, this affects your teaching as well, because you can see your students doing the same thing. And then you, you're, you're, it's your job to try to help them um, and a lot of times when you, when you teach, you have to decide, am I going to just tell them what to do or are they going to try to get them to have a deeper awareness um, so they can recognize it on their own? And hopefully, um, usually it's a combination. I mean, I try, to, I try to get them to see it or to hear it on their own. Um, but um, sometimes you just have to tell them what to do. So, um, uh, I wasn't happy with how you started, you know, okay. it, it just, um, it's Mark Piano, mm -hmm. um, and, but you know, you, you gotta kind of take a moment first to take a bre deep breath and then start. And I think that was kind of missing. It felt like you were picking up a conversation that in the middle somewhere. Okay? Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm not asking you to accent or anything, just take a moment and then have a sense of starting. Mm -hmm. Do it. Yeah, see, look, it seems like, wait, 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 wait. So it's a technical thing too. Remember what this, remember the, remember the, uh, the conducting thing where you come down like this, right? Mm -hmm. And then you come down and then you use the, you, you just so it's 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 all you know you're you want to have an attack it 
it's piano, but you're still using the weight somehow. So you're, it's, it's... So when you begin, you know, yeah. So go ahead and try that again. started now was a lot better. Um, um, yeah, so it's, it's sometimes when you're starting a piece, it's like breaking the ice, you know, mm -hmm. but you know, you don't have to hit it that hard. I mean, it, it probably is. Um, I also think it's like you're, you're, um, you want to start off the piece well. Yeah. You know, because it's like, even if you screw up the rest of it, at least it, Things started in a, in a good way, you know. Um, so all of those little um, arpeggios and, and um, little bird bird sounds. Again, make sure that you're working with a weight. The fingers are strong, but you're you're approaching it th with this kind of an attack. So nothing is too too heavy on the key, because these are, these are supposed to be controlled, especially when you start the section, the passage. Always, always beginning like if it's an arpeggio. The way you move, it's always strong, but it's like you're crescendoing into it. You're not start. Nothing is hard at the front end of it. Okay, this is obvious, but I just want to make sure those are little things you can do, kind of mentally, to make it easier to get through the piece without feeling like you're, you know, always kind of have a problem. So it's, it's a lot of times starting the passage is difficult. So using that kind of a slow kind of a drop from your from your shoulder, um, which you know how to do. Why don't you just do another one? Do the next one. Do the pick up to measure pick up to measure five, and just go up to me, into measure six. Sure. I mean. You know, as far as I can tell on the digital piano, it's it's good. I think a lot of it just, I think, hello? Sorry, yeah, I'm disappointed with what my left hand's doing, but yeah. Okay, well, I mean, I, I can agree with that, but I'm, I'm more concerned about just when you, um, just, it's a mental thing. Um, because you're struggling with the technique, but you know, as a sort of a mental habit, like part of your setup, is you always have an intentional approach to the beginning of each one of these places after a rest. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, there's always that sense of beginning the phrase carefully, you know, not, not, not out of paranoia, but out of just a, you have a plan. You know, try to have a plan when you start, that's all. Um, so that, and I think it's the technique, how to get into the, the touch so that it, it's controlled. Um, you know, because each one of those is a drop in a way. Left, right, left, right, left, like this. So that you're you're going up and down with your with your hands, um, but each each attack is um, not hard. It's like you're you're tapering. You're starting soft through each one. So you're see like that. Are you watching? No, you're not. Right. Avoid that. You're, you're trying to make it much more fluid. It's more, maybe if you, if you group it more um, by each hand movement as the primary pulse. So it's a little bit more um, blurred and fluid. I think is probably the, the idea. It's pedaled through, so it really, and it's soft, so it's really not supposed to be, you hear what I'm saying? It's not supposed to be, the, the notation, don't, don't, <laughs> you know, the three is there because it has to add up, but. Well, right, right, yeah, no, I'm, I'm thinking it might be a little bit too, of like, I'm, I'm still not 100% sure of the notes half the time. Um, 
and I might want to go through and check what fingers I have because it, that might also be an issue. Okay, that's all totally fine. And I don't. And again, I don't want to. I'm just trying to keep you out of trouble. That's all I'm doing. Yeah, so yeah. So because like, I'm, I'm trying to think of like why, why am I not doing that? And it's like, oh, because if. I'm still, like, my left hand is still trying to be maybe, like, wait, maybe here, it, here, But here, I mean, here. I just, you know, we do things without, uh, you know, sort of subconsciously, you know, and you, you mm -hmm. get habits and stuff. I'm just trying to, you know, make sure that you, you're working, you're, you're opening up this area of possibility for it. Sure, um, yeah. That, that's really the biggest concern. Believe me, there are places like, um, I'm, right now I can't help but think of the Beethoven Fifth Concerto, the last movement. There's a whole bunch of stuff like this, where you've got different groups and if you're starting to get rigid, it just doesn't sound right. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like if it goes from threes to fours or whatever, it needs to just flow. It cannot be a sudden break. Oh, now we're doing fours. Oh, now we're doing threes, you know, mm -hmm. um, that kind of thing. It's got to feel like a, a little bit more continuous and, and, you know, like a roulade in Chopin, you know, that kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, and in general, you know, this, the, I think you've made progress on the Twittering stuff throughout the piece. Um, if you remember, you want this twittering, and while it's soft, it's high energy twittering. You know, it never should sound like a flabby bird. It should always be very, very high energy. That's the thing. I want you to just to keep that in mind when you're working on it, when you're practicing it. That's the goal. Mm -hmm. um, now, I want to hear you play measure 13. Remember, we worked on this before. Um, maybe just a, maybe three or four measures, just. You can. You don't have to do the whole passage. I just want to hear, hear um, what's going on with those staccatos. The basic um, movements that you're doing are, in, in a basic sense, are, are correct and good. Um, mm -hmm. Can you make, um, you know, it's, it's a quiet passage, remember, and um, the twittering's happening, but it's quiet twittering. And then in the, 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 can you make the staccatos, you can still use pedal, but can you make the staccatos a little bit more uh, kind of short? Um, you can pedal through them, but, but what I'm getting is, even now, I mean, I was watching you on the video, it was even more pronounced in the video that the, it looked like you were playing tenudos, the way you were moving in your left hand. Clearly, the movements you were making were a very fat staccato, and I don't think that's what this is. These are, these are little birds. These are not like the ostrich, you know. Yeah, and then 35, I have in 35 a, a diminuendo smorzando. Do you have oh, that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Which implies there's some, some broadening there, some slowing. Mm -hmm. Okay, you should try to get that better, I think. Okay. Um, I think I missed that. Um, and um, why don't you play that? Can you just go like 34 up into 36? Just play those few measures. Sure, yeah. like you are, um, I mean, it's hard to just start in the middle, obviously, but it looks like you're, you're still not quite up to tempo. These so, are... Well, <laughs> so, I just don't want to open Pandora's box here. I mean, you know, you practice it slow, obviously, but then once it's up to tempo, you'll be able to do more broadening there, okay? Yeah, I, I think the problem is I, I can't play it at one speed, so to be able to play it at one speed and then control what the space does between the notes. Okay, and fair on. enough. I just feel like I want to make sure that I'm challenging you enough. <laughs> I'm not like, I'm, I'm not not letting you get away with, you know, thinking that, you know, oh, I'm done, everything's perfect, you know. I just want to make sure that you have a direction, you know. I don't want you to run out of ideas. That's no, what I'm afraid of. 
it, it definitely turns into like every week me being like, I feel really good about these four measures. <laughs> oh, there's a lot other places in this song that I don't feel so good about. Yeah, well, but you know that I hope, but you, the point is, of course, that you reconcile to that at some point and you're able to face it and then see that maybe you can find a direction. So mm -hmm. that's really the point of all this. But I'm just riffing on what List wrote. I want to make sure that at some point you start doing it. Sure. Um, that's all. So, and, and, and a little beyond that, too. I mean, obviously, the, there's a general sense of, like, um, it's got to have energy. And then it's got it's got to be in waves. There's got to be something happening. But that was just a, an explicit place. And I guess when I heard you play it, it sounded mechanical. And then I saw the marking, mm -hmm. and I said, Ah, maybe that's a way to give it some more shape and life. Mm -hmm. That was all. That's all that was. Um, you know, this whole there is a a very again in the romantic style a very long trajectory going on here. And you need to kind of carry the energy all the way through this whole section. Um, and, you know, it is technical because you got to keep those trills going. It, it's, it's like, you know, circular breathing, you know, for a wind player. I mean, you just, yeah. you, there's, no, there's no easy way. I mean, when you have these places here where you're doing... Um, little bit of a moment where you could you know breathe a little bit um, which makes sense but then you have this part I'm not going to attempt to play right now well maybe I should whatever it is so that, that whole thing yeah. you, don't, you don't get a chance to really slow down and that's that's tough you know um, to get that trill technique so it's it's really you know fast like that and again the slow practice but then push the tempo when you're practicing also pay attention to this so that it's not tightening in your forearm when you do the trills mm -hmm. those are all basic things but that's that's the answer there's no magic um, you yeah. just gonna keep working at it then then we get to the um the next section pick up to 46. kind of the same issue as before do you have un poco stringendo yes do you know what that means I don't remember. I have it written down somewhere. Okay, it means you're gonna get faster. Okay, that that's yeah. that helps you because that'll that'll help you to not be as um, you know punched in rhythm. You know, you want it to be more um, fluid somehow. Yeah, th th this one's still still like mess up on notes a lot. So um. right. So again, I recommend. You know the usual kind of work we would do, like an etude. You take a passage and you 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 woodshed it. <laughs> you, you you work it over um, to to really with a magnifying glass up to it. You know on a, you know a sound magnifying glass so that you can really hear if it's you know, all those little. to do pairs maybe and just listen to see if they're um, you know notice what your body's doing finding a comfortable way of doing it and then also criticizing the sound and going back and forth and back and forth um, if you again if you have if you practice it on the acoustic piano so the pedal will react in the yeah. way that you would want you know it's going to produce that sound I think that'll help you too because what I was hearing in the recording again, this passage didn't really flow into the following stuff, and and I think I think you understand the issue that it's got to it's got to somehow it's like it's bubbling over into this next you know like in forty eight where the Rinford Sando is right that's like that's like the climactic moment of the um, the crescendo you know this uh, you know whatever that is so that. It's got to feel like it kind of flowed comfortably, not not like it's any kind of hitch hitch in there. Um, yeah, th th this definitely feels like this in measure nine through thirteen feels like one of those places where, you know, like I played through and it, it 
feels like it stayed the same level and other stuff around it sort of got better. And so now I'm like, oh, yeah, it still feels like I say read every time I get there. Oh, no, no, it's probably, <laughs> no, I bet it's better. I think it's better. You know, if you memorized it, it would, it would be, you know, probably even more comfortable, even though yeah. 